What is the Matthew principle in economics? And this is basically the notion of power to the powerful or money to people who already have money. It actually comes from a Bible quote from the book of Matthew, which is how it got its name. For to all those who have, more will be given, and they will have an abundance. But from those who have nothing, even what they have will be taken away. And this is a general principle of many different types of systems, including ecological systems and uh, power-based systems. But of course, for this context, we're talking about economic systems. And I think the best way to start understanding this is to start with an economy that is luck-based, like purely luck-based. And you might imagine the game Monopoly actually captures this principle, where the people who are pretty lucky early in the game tend to accumulate more and more power over the game. The people who are unlucky early in the game tend to get less and less and hand over more of their resources to those who were lucky early in the game. And of course, after we go through the luck example, we can translate that into other types of things. For example, if we look at what's um, behind income distribution, it's definitely not just luck. It's like luck and hard work and talent and an ability to attune one's efforts to the needs of the economy. All of those are going to play a role in sort of where a person ends up along the income distribution. But there is this principle where if you are behind, it is harder and harder to get ahead. And if you're ahead, you have the resources you need to actually magnify your, your wealth and magnify uh, your economic stability. So let's start with the luck-based example. And let's imagine a simple economy where everybody starts out with the exact same amount of money, and that is $100. And every round they can bet half of their money, and if they win the coin toss of that bet, then they get however much they bet back. So if they bet 50, they'll get another 50, and they'll end that round with 150 after the first round. But if they lose, they just lose the money they bet, so they would end up with $50 after the first round. Now you can see that this is a zero growth economy I've set up because of course on average half of the people will win, half of the people will lose, and the money will just be redistributed to the people who won the coin toss. And I would like to start by looking at the person who wins all 10 rounds versus the person who's 90% lucky and wins the first 9 rounds but uh, has an unlucky coin toss at the very last moment. So. 90% lucky versus 100% lucky, after 10 rounds, what does that do to the distribution of wealth? So let's track this. The lucky person goes from 100 to 150 after the first round. Then they bet half of that 150, which is $75, and they win, and that puts them up to $225. They bet half of that, and they win, it puts them up to $337. And you can see the sequence as it goes down. By the end of 10 rounds, this person has $5,766. What about the person who was 90% lucky? Well, they actually had the same pattern up until the very last round, and in the very last round, they lost the bet, so their wealth at the end of 10 rounds is $1,922. And if you compare these, you will find that the 100% lucky person is three times as wealthy as the 90% lucky person. Now, I want to point out here, it doesn't actually matter which round this 90% lucky person won. If you do the same exercise where they lost the first round and then won every round after that, you get the same number. So what about the person who's 50% lucky and 50% unlucky? Like, what would you expect them to have after 10 rounds? So you can see here that in the first round, they lose, so they end up with $50. But they bet half of that, they bet 25 and end up with $75 when they win. The next time they bet half of that and they lose and they end up with 37.5. So after 10 rounds, this person who is right in the middle of the luckiness spectrum ends up with $23.73, having started with $100. I think that's the surprising element for a lot of people when they do this exercise. 
And of course, you can do the same exercise for the person who is unlucky all 10 rounds. And that's the income distribution after 10 rounds. And then of course, if you do another 10 rounds, this whole process exacerbates what we've already seen. The 100% lucky person ends up with nine times as much as the person who is 90% lucky. The person who is lucky half the time and unlucky half the time ends up with less than $6. And each of our bottom two characters ends up with less than one cent. Now, of course, in the economy, because there is hard work and there's talent and all of that, you could add that into the system. We might imagine if we did the same exercise, except instead of luck, it's hard work. And how much you end up with on this exercise is going to depend on how hard you work. So our 50-50 lucky person will turn into the person at the exact 50th percentile of how hard they work. So 50% of the population works harder than them, 50% of the population works less hard than them. And if we use the same rules where you bet half your money and you either get a return on that or you lose it, then the person who is at the 50th percentile of hard work, they actually end up losing a lot of money in this setup. Now, of course, hard work is going to generate more goods, so perhaps the size of the pie will expand, but the distribution of that pie is going to be distributed according to some type of power law distribution. Now, you could rejigger the numbers, so maybe if you bet half your money, um, the return is 10% and the loss is 10% of the amount you bet, and that would slow down this process of power to the powerful. But if you add enough rounds of that, it's going to end up in the same place as the bet 50% and win it or lose it sort of situation. So it's really a matter of how quickly does the system depreciate towards one of these uh, highly unequal income distributions. And of course, you could do the same exercise, except if instead of hard work, this was about talent, um, and it would give you the same result. So the basic idea here is that over time, systems tend to give more to the powerful and less to the people who don't have power, and it's really hard to get out of the hole once you're in that sort of bottom 20% of the income distribution. And that's especially true when getting education, getting uh, skills and capital and resources, that's how you sort of build stability in your life. And once you're behind in terms of stability, it's really, really hard to catch up. Now, the same principle can apply to non-monetary things. For example, attention inequality happens where the algorithms on a platform send more viewers to the YouTubers who have more views already, and that sort of channels viewers and channels attention toward the very top, and it's hard for people who don't get a lot of views to um, get ahead of the game. And that's true with podcasts, it's true with musicians, and especially anytime you're on one of these platforms where the platform will use algorithms to determine will this person enjoy this particular song, for example. Well, if lots of other people have enjoyed it, that song is more likely to get recommended. The more it's recommended, um, the more it's viewed, the more it's viewed as viewable. So there's the same power law distribution of attention to musicians, attention to YouTubers, attention to any content creator on one of these platforms. In the scholarly world, there's the Google Scholar effect where um, articles that get cited show up at the top of Google Scholar, so when other researchers are doing their own research, they're more likely to find the ones that show up at the top. So the algorithm ends up upregulating those who are at the very top and downregulating those who are several rungs down. This principle also relates to Metcalfe's law, which basically says in networks where you want to connect with other people, as the number of people on a network expands, the possible connections expands exponentially. So if you compare two platforms where one platform has 10% more users than another platform, the power and the um, agility of that network in terms of access to other people is way more than 10 times more valuable. So it tends to lead to power to the powerful in the realm of online platforms. So that's the Matthew principle in economics.